Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, today is the day new installation access control procedures take effect. And April is the month of the military child. We'll run down the month's events. And transition assistance helps you dress for success. These stories and more. But first, for the last several weeks, we have broadcast the fact that installation access control procedures were being brought in line with Army-wide and Department of Defense requirements. Recently, Garrison Commander Colonel Brian Foley hosted a town hall event about access procedures. The Colonel says that while April 4th is the date, the Garrison has been working toward this day for months. On the 4th of April, we will be uh, implementing what is the final measure uh, of a series of uh, requirements and measures that the Army has directed all Army installations to take uh, globally. On the 4th of April, we are, we are only, there's only one change that is occurring that's different than the way we are already doing business. We have been implementing the Army standards and measures over the course of the past six to seven months gradually. So it's been a gradual implementation and this final step uh, we now are taking again on the 4th. That step is simply that um, the, the standard, the requirement is all short-term guests, not just long-term guests, guests that are coming on this installation for less than 24 hours, just for a, you know, a couple hour visit or to do uh, business, to drop off a pizza, uh, those types of short-term guests must be issued a actual access pass to the installation. The town hall lasted about an hour. For a complete audio transcript of the event, go to MeTV's YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash FortMeadMD. Another good resource for access control questions is last week's issue of the Sound Off newspaper. Last week's paper features an eight-page informational insert on installation access control. Once again, these changes have been phased in over time. If you're still not sure how these changes affect you, contact the Visitors Control Center at the Reese Road gate. In other news, 30 years ago, in 1986, the Department of Defense designated April as the month of the military child. It's an annual effort to recognize the unique challenges, hard work, and courage of military children. Fort Meade has a month-long slate of events to honor military children. The Youth Center, Teen Center, and the Child Development Centers are all participating, starting with April 8th's Moving on the Lawn. Other highlights include a parent youth dinner on the 15th. Also on the 15th, wear purple to show your support for military children. There's a family fun walk, part of MWR's 2016 run series on the 23rd. And as you can see, there are many events for Fort Meade children and the entire family. For more information, contact Army Community Service. Meanwhile, in a related story, the Springtime Youth Fishing Rodeo is coming up Saturday, April 16th from 8 a.m. to 1 at Burba Lake. There are three age divisions for kids 3 to 6, 7 to 11, and 12 to 15. Limited fishing gear and bait are available. Maryland fishing regulations are in effect, so no other fishing is allowed on the day of the rodeo until after 1 o'clock. For details, you can go to www.mead.armymwr.com. Finally, a couple of reminders from the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. First, on Friday, April 22nd, the Korean American Women's Society is hosting a Just Pants for Men event. They're donating 500 pairs of new dress pants. Separating and retiring service members must pre-register. Go to www.eventbrite.com and search for Just Pants for Men. In a closely related story, Transition Assistance is bringing back another Sunni Warriors event. Transitioning service members can sign up and receive a free suit in preparation for the civilian workforce. However, you must sign up for this event as well. Go to ftmeadsw.eventbrite.com. And that's all for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great Mead week. They do so much for us. That's why we do so much for them. USO Metro's programs boost the morale of our military members and their families. Located right here in the Washington, Baltimore region are the largest USO centers in the world. The USO Warrior and Family Centers at Fort Belvoir and Bethesda. These state-of-the-art centers provide services to lift the spirits of our troops and their families and offer robust programs for the wounded, ill, and their caregivers. USO Metro Centers and Airport Lounges provide a strong sense of community, familiarity, and trust by providing a home away from home. USO Metro is proud to serve those who serve and their families in Maryland, Northern Virginia, and Washington, D.C.